So thank you for taking your time to uh, write your reflections on the worksheets. And uh, let's start with uh, just first impressions or thoughts about the scenario. Let's start with uh, the family member. So what were your impressions or just thoughts? You can give me wo words or sentences. Um, I was just really concerned about my mom, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that the nurse that was coming in to take care of her was you know, going to be there to take care of her needs. Mm -hmm. So my concern was just making sure that she was going to be OK. Um, so I just wanted to ask the nurse uh, questions to make sure that uh, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, questions for the nurse? Um, any emotions that were going through through you, or running through? Worried and at the same time um, sad that my mom was in the hospital mm -hmm. feeling this way, but worried because at times I noticed that the, the nurse that was taking care of her might have felt like you know you might have felt like overwhelmed or something. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that he was okay enough to take care mm -hmm. of my mom. Okay. So that also relates to uh, the questions that you have yeah. for the RN. Um, what about our RN or the nurse? What emotions uh, were running through your, your mind? What impressions do you have about the scenario as the scenario unfolded? I, I was overwhelmed. I, I felt like the uh, mm -hmm. trying to get up to date with the patient on the computer was okay. impossible um, because of throwing up and, and dizziness and pain uh, and then hearing about a heart condition. So mm -hmm. um, it was, again, I'm out of practice. I've been going to art school for the last month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to figure out what, what, am I, what are my priorities, how do I prioritize everything. So um, that was really difficult for me to, to do with the patient talking to me, the daughter talking to me, and then trying to um, reconcile what's in the computer at the same time. Usually, you know, when we were on clinical, you had all the time to read up on the patient outside on the computer before you walk into the room. Mm -hmm. So it felt, I should have just said, wait. You know, let, let me let me catch up what's going on uh, in the orders. Let me catch up what's going on with the patient, and then I'll address all of your questions. But I didn't do that because I was out of practice. Okay. Yeah. Number one. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. Fair enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an overwhelming uh, situation uh, at that point. Uh, what about uh, our uh, uh, patient care tech? Any uh, impressions? or thoughts running through your mind as the scenario unfolded? <coughs> it was chaos. Every time he wanted to go shut something on the computer, the patient was throwing up or dizzy, so we couldn't do one thing at a time. And I felt bad because I couldn't do anything for him. So he was just like running all over the place, not really getting anything done. And the family members like asking questions, and he's like, I don't know. I'm just trying to deal with the symptoms right now. I'm not trying to figure out what's wrong with her. Mm -hmm. So they're just trying to deal with, to make her feel better at the moment, mm -hmm. not, because so, they don't know what's happening even right now, so mm -hmm. it's just like running around all the place. Okay. So did I uh, capture yeah. your feelings right there? You felt like there's chaos going on, and you felt bad that you were not able to do much. Yeah, because I was just attacked, so I wasn't... Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't delegated, mm -hmm. like, there's not much I can do, mm -hmm. as opposed to if I was, like, a second nurse. Yes. Then one of us can be on the computer making sure everything's mm -hmm. and whatnot. And he didn't have a complete history of the patient. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, she's like, he has a heart, she has a heart condition. It's mm -hmm. like, what was this in the files? Okay. So, again, uh, and I think I wrote that elsewhere, not enough. Oh, yes. Information. So. So you're trying to get updated information and it, you felt like you did not have enough information in, in the beginning. Yeah, because uh, he got orders for the IV and then all of a sudden she was like, she's a heart condition. You can't give her that much volume. Okay. So he was like, what? Where was this? Uh-huh. 
Okay. So, right. So, mm, new information. Where is this from? Okay. Um, all right. So, what about the uh, observers, uh, Natasha and? Uh, Impressions, thoughts, emotions that were running through you. So at, at this point, let's talk briefly about what went right then. So let's start with the RN. So what? <laughs> <laughs> of course, right? So we always talk about uh, what went right. So what are the things that went right uh, for you in this scenario? I don't, I don't feel like anything went right for me. I, I, I felt like I dropped the ball. All all the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't, again, like I'm out of practice, but beyond that, it's just not how I did it in the hospital, mm -hmm. right? So I knew what was going down with the patient. So that just, I didn't feel like anything went mm -hmm. right, right but from my perspective. I completely, I would have, I would have agreed. I would have been worried if I would have seen this dude come mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. go back and forth so scattered from what's in front of him on the screen. The patient is throwing up. The patient is dizzy. The, you know, the daughter's worried. Um, I would have been worried too. So, I, I, from where I was sitting, by the time I was hooking up, a, you know, just the normal saline, and then the thing was over, I, I didn't feel like anything. Mm -hmm. right? But, but think through what happened in the scenario, the steps that you did, the actions that you did, and and, and what went right. So, um, what was the first action that you did, well, for just, example? I just, I, I told this tech to take take uh, vital signs so uh, that I could read the, uh, the you know the what was on the mm -hmm. wow. So a delegation, right? So that you delegated some tasks to the task, the, the tech, um, and and just the little actions that you normally would do. Yeah. He called the doctors and got orders for the normal saline and other medication he needed instead of just going ahead and giving it to them. He called in and got an order for them. Mm -hmm. okay. He obtained some orders from the doctor. Fuels count. Mm -hmm. Identify the patient. Mm -hmm. Communicate it therapeutically with the patient. Mm -hmm. Looking back, there are a lot of things that, that went right. And, and of course, the next discussion would be what could we do to make it better or that for the next time, this is what we're going to do. But before we do that, let's uh, look at the uh, scenario and, and dissect the problems of the patient and, and what's going on so that we can plan better. and do better in clinicals and for the next scenarios. So let's let's go ahead and, and talk about uh, Samantha Chavez. So what is Samantha's story? And, and uh, our uh, secondary nurse can probably help us uh, give a, a better picture of that in, in terms of what's going on with Samantha. How old is this patient? She was, uh, she was 53. 53, okay. Female. 52. Oh, 52. And um, what's, what's going on with uh, our patient? What's, what's her story? She was complaining of um, nausea. Is she diagnosed with bowel obstruction? Yes. Okay. Dizziness. Um, mm -hmm. She hadn't had a bowel movement in three days. Okay. And the last one she had had uh, blood in it and mucus. Bloody stools? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? As aside from the report, uh, if you look at the setting, what else is going on with uh, Samantha? Samantha checkers. She's in pain. She's in pain. What about history? What what happened previously? Is there anything that is significant in um, her story? Oh, yeah. Yes, I last time. She had a cholecystectomy, uh, five, two, 
Okay, Pri prior abdominal surgery, like uh, yes. poly polycystectomy, you said? Yes. What else? Should fluid overload at some point in time? Um, fluid overload? Yeah, that's what the camera member said. The last time we. Yeah. Yes, and before that, uh -huh. they gave too much fluid and it caused problems. So the patient has a heart condition for her family. Mm -hmm. What else? So what else is going on with somatic checkups? What's her story? So if you're looking at this story here, what then are your nursing problems? If you are um, taking care of a patient who is 52 years old, with uh, currently diagnosed with small bowel obstruction, with all of these conditions right here, um, what would be our nursing problem? Other problems. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned pain. Okay. And what what would cause pain in this case? The fact that nothing is really moving and things are just building up. Um, it, it, the slowing down of her fertility uh, mm -hmm. size and her abdomen you get become distended mm -hmm. and, and it's stretching and it's making her feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So pain, slow motility, distension. What else? Mm -hmm. and, and what problems would be caused by nausea and vomiting? What other nursing problems would you be expected to deal with because the patient is uh, throwing up? She's not moving. She's not moving. Mm -hmm. She's uh, laying in bed and she's been sick, so I think a lack of her movement causes, like, can cause her to have a slow, slow enough her mm -hmm. GI system. And, and not moving enough, is that a nursing problem by itself? Yes, or are they nursing cause other things mm -hmm. with her skin and other things with her, um, you know, you get worried about other problems too, like mm -hmm. her blood flow and Mm -hmm. down. Okay, so down from the of the further, mm -hmm. right? So, so then I uh, heard um, risk for skin breakdown. Is that what I did? Uh, now think of uh, small bowel obstruction, nausea, family, and immediate risk. What, as nurses, what are we going to be worried about if we see oh, patients? Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, does she actually have uh, an electrolyte imbalance or fluid and electrolyte imbalance? I don't think so. I don't think she would. The nurse didn't get the opportunity to look at the lab. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh huh. So the nurse did not have an opportunity to look at the labs, but if she would have looked further. The actual uh, potassium level for today is 3.2. Yeah. So, so then you have, and that would be related to, right, vomiting. So that is actually uh, a problem. It's an actual problem. So it would also have been a problem also because he only worked. Okay, so we got an order for normal saving okay, at 125 ml per hour. Okay, so that's your uh, order right there. Um, and I also and remember the, uh, the nurse telling the tech that she couldn't have any more ice chips, so I think they were trying to keep her from getting anything by mouth. Mm -hmm. Which can like further, I mean, potentiate her um, her fluid and electrolyte balance. And and to add to that story, I think she's based on NPO mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Um. So aside from a fluid and electrolyte imbalance, um, what other problems can we have here? Think of uh, even graver risk if you have 
fluid and electrolyte imbalance and dehydration. So nothing is really a circulation is going to be, I don't think, could be a problem because nothing is really moving or circulating. Mm -hmm. it's just, so she could be at risk for like a DVD or something mm -hmm. um, because of the, the decrease in perfusion. Okay. Which is already a heart condition. Okay. Okay. So you have you have cardiac issues, you have ongoing fluid and electrolyte imbalances and dehydration. Think of circulatory problems. What circulatory risk can our patient experience in relation to this story right here? Shock. And then what kind of shock? Hypovolemic shock. So the patient is nauseous, the patient is vomiting, throwing up. They can have a risk for hypovolemic shock. What would explain that? Okay. No, again, I'm just re re reinforcing. With her vitals and with her history and um, her symptoms and the signs that we're seeing mm -hmm. or the nurse is seeing um, would indicate that she could potentially go into hypovolemic shock. Right. So as nurses then, what should we be assessing or looking out for in order for us to anticipate the risk for hypovolemic shock? Okay, heart rate and the rest of Vital signs. Okay. So if you recall what happened in the scenario, what happened to the patient's vital signs? If we would have to do the simulation all over again, what are the activities or assessment or, or tasks that you would want to do better? And um, as an observer, right, what, what have you observed uh, that would have been, that would have been done better? Just um, any kind of assessment, abdominal assessment. Okay. So, so then, of course, we're thinking of a small bowel obstruction, and therefore our focus assessment is uh, um, GI. Mm -hmm. However, we now know that it's not just GI that is affected in this story, and therefore, what else would you be assessing? If you say we have a risk for hypovolemic shock, what else would be included in the assessment? Yep, mm -hmm. right, circulation. Okay. Definitely. And, uh, well, of course, you said labs, um, just because we expect uh, electrolyte imbalances, so what labs will you be looking at aside from? You're looking at potassium, you're looking at sodium. Um, we're looking at her kidneys too. Okay. So maybe a mm -hmm. to kind of see if she's not being, um, and to kind of see what her kidney function is. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, so then if we have to go to clinicals tomorrow or the next day, what uh, important information will you take from this scenario and how are you going to use it? And let's, let's start with you. I definitely want to know if we're going in the lab work with the, uh, the testing and so on. Mm -hmm. Just expecting she would have some sort of blood flow imbalance. Um, I definitely want to check her history as more. I would anticipate an NG tube and possible sort of things. Okay. Yeah. And, and therefore, if we have a mental map of a typical patient like Samantha going in prior to taking care of our patients, we have a better perspective and we have uh, 
a better way to prepare ourselves as to what can happen and what is actually happening to our patients so we provide a more comprehensive care.